Hello there guys, it's me and Stable Voltage and welcome back to episode 2 of Crusader Kings 2 on the second attempt this time around of trying to uh, form the Empire of Britannia starting off as the Duke of Mercia. So, we've gone to war down here with um, Gloucester. We are going to attempt to take this province. It shouldn't take too long, I'm just going to go back up to um, speed 4 now. Um, game's lagging a little bit, but that's Crusader Kings 2 for you. Um... We don't really have to worry too much about this uh, this war right now. And the reason I say that is because he can't raise any troops. We are sieging out his only province. So there's nothing he can do about it at this point in time. Uh, what do we want to do here? Um, it started as an uneasiness around guests and strangers and evolved into an awkwardness and a strong feeling of discomfort. I don't want to meet any new people, so I, I have a 45% of becoming shy, which would reduce my diplomacy. Or I can just become gregarious, which would give me extra diplomacy, more attraction, more vassal opinion, more same trait opinion. Well, of course I'd prefer gregarious over shy. 45% chance. Did we get it? No, we didn't. That is a little bit of a shame. We've got uh, vicious rumours against the general opinion minus 10. There are all kinds of foul rumours about this character, most likely started by some rival or enemy. Well, that's a little bit crappy, isn't it? We have, however, finished that siege. So let us go ahead now. He has managed to raise some more troops up somewhere else, actually, but it's not going to help him at this point because we're at 100% war score. So let's go ahead and enforce our demands. And there we go. We have um, claimed... Gloucester. So we can go ahead now and just stand down all of the army. Let's just go and disband the whole lot. So that's not too bad. If we look at our military now, yeah, they'll recover quite quickly. So that's a good start. We've got a little bit of extra land and now we're just sucking up to people. Still not as good as it could be. This guy really doesn't like us nearly as much as he should. We will have to think about um, maybe sending him a gift. We could try and bribe him. Uh, we do have an extra piece of land now in our domain, which I think we'll just uh, we'll just keep a hold of for the time being because our domain limit is four or five, so we don't need to give away um, Gloucester. We can sort of hold on to it for the time being, and uh, yeah, we just need to sort of increase our opinion with our vassals. These these vassal levies raised too long modifier will go away very shortly because it goes down by one per month. Now, we could actually create the Duchy of Weiss if we wanted to. And then we control two duchies. Now, yeah, we keep upsetting religious heads. The problem with having two duchies again is because we have two sons. If we were to, to die, one son would inherit um, the Duchy of Mercia, which would be the, the petty kingdom of Mercia. But then the other son would inherit the Duchy of Weiss, which would be these two provinces down here. And he would then become independent. At least with counties being lost to other sons that wouldn't be such a terrible thing because at least they would still be within the petty kingdom of mercia so we don't have to worry about lesser titles leaving the realm is the important thing to remember so we'll just keep sucking up playing on speed four i guess we could go in to intrigue and we can just make sure that we do things like um some affairs some affairs gives us monthly prestige i much prefer the feast because at least the feast tends to give you more opinion but We'll go ahead and do a fair anyway, just because we haven't done one so far in this playthrough. So we can gain 10 prestige for the loss of some piety. We can upset another bishop. Or we can lose 5 prestige, gain some piety, and the bishop approves of us. Well, let's see if we can go for that one. What are our bishoply opinions at the moment? Still not fantastic. Bishop of Canterbury still likes the Pope more than he does me. Bishop of Leicester. Bishop of Leicester actually likes me more than he likes the Pope, which means he's paying taxes, which is really nice, which is what we want to aim for. But the rest of them don't, so we'll have to go and suck up to them. So, um, mummers are singing outside the townhouses while slowly moving towards my castle. The summer affair suddenly felt less pleasant as the mummers, clad in strange clothes, went from door to door singing and frightening small children. So, the peasants are upset, which would give us some local revolt risk for a year, which isn't terrible. Or, we can gain some piety, and the mayor's opinion of us is reduced, because uh, he despises Gregarious. 
or we can have a 25% chance to gain Gregarious. Now, Gregarious is actually quite a good modifier. We missed out on it last time. Let's try again. Nope, missed it again. Again, the game seems um, very keen on giving me crap rolls. So again, prestige for piety. Let's lose a little bit of prestige, gain some piety, and get some more opinion with the Bishop of Leicester. So now that we've done that, if we just go and have a quick look down here at our vassals. And you like as 100, you like the Pope 80. That's very, very good. Let's see if we can work on the Bishop of Canterbury now. So we're going to go ahead and take our court chaplain. And you are going to try and improve things down here in Kent. Hopefully you won't screw it up. So we gain some prestige. Now ideally you want to get your prestige up to 2,000 as quickly as possible because you do get points of opinion for every, I think it's 100 points of prestige that you have and it has a cap of 20 I believe. So if we look at our opinion here, yeah, so we've our prestige is 200 so that gives us plus 2 opinion and I think the maximum you can get is plus 20 opinion which would be 2,000 prestige. So you definitely want to try and get up to 2,000 prestige. Would be nice if we could improve things a little bit more with this guy. Doesn't like our short reign. That will go away at some point. We've also got these vicious rumours which aren't helping matters too much. Um, he's envious, but that's just a character trait. Why do you like us so little? Well, same reasons, but we haven't really done an awful lot to improve things with you. But we could definitely go and get our Chancellor over there to try and improve relations with you. I guess we probably should do that. So let's go ahead, grab our Chancellor, and you can try and improve relations with this guy in Derby. So one children lack a guardian. It is our oldest son. Now we could try and um, tutor him ourselves, which is always a good thing. You should always try and do that because you actually get to pick the options for them. You can use them for opinion by sort of giving them to other people to educate, but we're actually going to uh, educate him ourselves. Because that way we get to choose all of the uh, all of the events. What we can do is just before he turns um, 16, we can go and give him to somebody else and give him a better education. And that means there's a lot less chance of uh, the person that's educating them from being able to pick those negative events for us. But we don't have to worry about that yet. Um, still gaining some technology, which is good. I don't think we really have enough to uh, improve anything right now. So we'll carry on trying to uh, gain some money. How are things going in the realm? The old uh, the wife hasn't been uh, pregnant for a while. She still doesn't really like us. Uh, because even she's turned off by the vicious rumours. And she doesn't like the uh, the attraction um, to ugly. Gives us minus, uh, minus 20. Well, at least she's honest. I mean, we could try and improve things with her. We could go ahead and, and give her a gift or something. Change her 20 gold, change her opinion by 52. Look at that, all of a sudden she has a positive opinion. Not that it really makes much of a difference at this point, but there you go. More likely to have more children, I suppose. So the question is, do we want to risk going to war with anybody else? We could certainly try and grab another province or two. At the moment, our Chancellor's busy sucking up in Derby, though. We could go and try and grab something like Middlesex or Essex. So, um... My liege, I write to you with bad news from Leicester. My efforts to squeeze some extra taxes out of the population have met with resistance and the peasants are arming themselves. I fear we may, might have a revolt on our hands soon. So our steward screwed up a little bit trying to um, collect a tithe there and unfortunately it's upset a few people for a few months but uh, I don't think that's going to be too disastrous for us. And we've got another child that lacks the Guardian. Again, we've got another son. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to educate him. And we are going to use ourselves. And the Earl's opinion. Earl of Derby, who we're sucking up with. Your opinion's changed to us by plus 30 for four years. That's really good. So that's going to help out. Yep, so we are starting to get some opinion with these guys. There's also the uh, the Count of Oxford. We'd like you to like us a little bit more as well. So let's go ahead and grab our Chancellor and we'll send you to Oxford. That short reign will go away. I think you always tend to get that modifier if you play as a custom ruler. Because it's classed as them ruling from the day that the game starts more than anything else. 
But we will definitely try and take on some of these um, smaller duchies. It may be worth grabbing Middlesex because that'll give us an easy way to grab Surrey and Sussex and Kent because they're all independent. That'll certainly help. So here we go. This is one of the first events that we get for one of our uh, one of our children. Uh, my son Oswald practically lives in the kitchens, the little glutton. So he, eat and be merry, child, which would give him um, the trait gluttonous, which we don't want him to have because it really ruins his stewardship and attraction opinion and church opinion. We can birch him, which um, still uh, which would give him a chance of losing the trait gluttonous. We can talk to him about moderation. Which gives him a 50% chance to gain temperate or gluttonous. Or we can pray Jesus will save him. Which there's only a 20% chance that he'll lose. We'll go for this one. Because we'd like him to be temperate if we can. No guarantees it'll work. But we can go and have a look. And we can see... Was that the right son? Um, Oswald. He didn't get either of them. So once again, the game's giving me uh, the illusion of choices. But not actually giving me anything from them. Damn you, game. Why, why should you do this? Here's my other son. Um, my son, uh, Bortic? Botric. Beortric. Yeah, let's say Beortric. Beortric is not uh, exerting himself in his studies. I am starting to despair. So, basically, the choices are slothful or diligent. It's the same choices we had last time, except um, with different outcomes. So, We'll talk to him about diligence and hopefully he will gain that trait. He did not, so once again, not actually gaining anything from these events so far. We'll see if we can get one improvement with the uh, Earl of Oxford and then we'll probably jump and try and fabricate a claim on Middlesex or Essex or something like that. Remember, of course, uh, in doing this we do end up losing uh, gold and prestige, so you don't want to be... Pursuing fabricated claims too often. Right, we've got another child that lacks a guardian, which is actually our daughter. So this time around, we are going to educate child. But what we're going to do is we're going to pick someone who we want to gain opinion with. Like, for example, the Earl of Oxford. So we could go ahead and say, right, you train my daughter. And his opinion of us will then be increased by 20. So if we go ahead and look in the realm tree, you can now see that his opinion is 44 because he is interested in ward. So I've entrusted my ward to him, gives 20 opinions. So we are starting to improve things with these guys here. Your opinion of me has dropped. You're still envious. Yeah, we don't really have any improved relations or any sort of decent modifiers with you. Let's just go ahead and unpause things. I thought we were, we were unpaused. So maybe we actually need to suck up to this guy a little bit more now. The Count of Worcester. A lot of, lot of just moving the... Um, the Chancellor around just trying to improve relations in the early game, which is probably good. It's a little bit of a strange thing that you actually have two, uh, one character that does two jobs. So basically he's in charge of fabricating your claims, but also improving your relations, which is kind of like EU4. But at least in EU4 you have multiple diplomats that can all do that. Um, so the Earl of Worcester, who's the guy that I'm trying to... Um, improve relations things with you have just gone and screwed things up you've insulted them you've you've only been there for like a month and you've already insulted him to the point where he's now got a negative opinion of me this guy controls half of my levies that is not a good thing now the count of oxford likes us quite a bit what i could do if i wanted to is i could go ahead and give him um the county of gloucester is that in the same duchy i think it is does your duchies now one worry that i did have uh, in the previous campaign uh which somebody pointed out i was worried that if i gave somebody uh, both of these counties they could create the duchy because obviously i can create the duchy of weiss because i own more than 51 percent of the counties within the duchy so i was worried that anyone that i gave both of those counties to would be able to do it but apparently and I'm hoping this is true. Uh, apparently, they can't actually create a title equal to or greater than their liege's title. So they can't break free. So what I could do is I could go to this guy, grant him, grant him a landed title, and give him the uh, county of um, Gloucester. So there you go, fella. Now you are going to be a little bit stronger. And that should also drastically improve his opinion of me as well. 
So his opinion of me now is now up to 84. And not only does he have more opinion, he is also more powerful because he controls two counties. So I've actually got someone that I could potentially use to fight against this guy if things turn south. We are still improving relations with our head of religion. We've got some technology points that we could spend on military. Uh, heavy infantry is always a good one to start with because we do start with a fair bit of heavy infantry. Let's have a quick look now at the vassal opinion. Got to keep our eye on these um, bishops and stuff. Bishop of Leicester doesn't like us as much anymore now. For some strange reason. Vicious rumours mainly. Short reign. And he likes his Pope a lot. Guess we might want to try and bring our... Um, guy back to there. Strange, I literally only just sent him there. Mission to Leicester so far has been a success. During my visit to the court of Cardinal Ebel of Rochester, I've managed to make him understand what a benevolent priest and ruler you are. So is that actually in Lincoln? Bishopric of Lincoln. Quite strange, not too sure where that uh, improved from. We've got another child that doesn't have a guardian. Now this is another son. But this is my third born. I can't teach him myself. So again, we could go and use him for opinion. So let's go and educate child. And um, yeah, this guy in Worcester. Let's go and use him because we'd like to get some opinion with him. So that'll certainly help out a little. At least it should. So if we go and have a look. Yeah, he does have some positive opinion. But we do need to still uh, increase that where we can. The Pope has died. Long live the Pope. We have another. Obviously, there's a few little wars and things going on around here. Our prestige is going up. We haven't done sort of like um, fairs and feasts and things for a while, which I I really should keep those going because getting the prestige is a good way to offset fabricating claims. So let's go ahead and hold a summer fair as we can afford to do it. And we can probably have a feast as well. So we could lose a little bit of prestige for gaining some piety. Piety is good as well. And plus we also want to increase our um, the amount that certain bishops like us. Like this guy, for example. How much do you like me? Not all that much, really. Okay, that's fine. And his opinion of me has changed. Let's just go have a look at that and see what he's up to now. 51. This guy's actually got a bigger chunk of the uh, the army now. So yeah, we definitely want to keep him happy. But that now probably means that we can almost safely get you to fabricate a claim. Oh, well, before we do, what are, the, what are we like with allies? Do you have any allies? No, you don't. So let's assume he's going to stay like that for a while. Get you to go and fabricate a claim on Middlesex. And we'll see if we can work our way down to the coast. Uh, we can get this chance of getting uh, Gregarious again. I've gained the Gregarious trait. Fantastic. So that's actually quite useful for me. So Gregarious gives me... It's all positive. Gives me a, a more attraction opinion, more diplomacy, more vassal opinion, and more same trait opinion. It ended really quickly. Uh, but the good thing is, if we go and have a look now at our realm tree, this guy's nearly up to 97. This guy's up to 62. Things are improving generally across the realm. It's this is so difficult if you've never played this game. If you hold down the left mouse button, it moves the window. If you hold down the right mouse button, it moves... The, sorry, the middle mouse button, it moves the map. If you hold down the right mouse button, it moves the contents of the window. Uh, but it's not the same on every single window. So it's just annoying. So as you can see, there's a fair few bishops here that aren't paying taxes that we do need to try and increase things with. But we'll allow things to tick on. Uh, we do probably have enough time to... Uh, well, yeah, we should. We can actually go on a grand hunt. I keep forgetting about this. We've actually got the um, the hunting focus, so we could go on a grand hunt, providing the month is September, which it is indeed. So let's go on a grand hunt, find the white stag. No real point in. Um, taking that focus if you're not going to do the event so lately you've heard persistent rumors from peasants and travelers uh, in the wilds that a strange mythical beast has been sighted in your realm it's a white stag powerful and elusive the common folk claim it comes from another world and the hunter who claims it will be imbued with divine power so um, i will send people out to find it 
Um, so that was uh, at first glance that looks like it's a negative, but that means that the bishop's opinion of the pope has been reduced by minus ten. So he's not actually increased our bishop's opinion with us, but he's decreased his opinion of the pope. Um, a white heart has been seen in the north of Leicester. I am told it is a heart of ten and the biggest ever seen. The biggest deer ever seen. So, find no joy in killing a, pride anim uh, a proud animal, which will give us some piety. I will send out our best hunter, which would give us some prestige. And also, the um, that Earl of Worcester would gain 15 opinion of me and be delighted. Or, this is my kill, which can give me a chance of becoming wounded or maimed. The only decent thing in there, really, is probably the... Well, diligent and martial, but it's a low chance. And knowing my luck, I'll end up maimed or wounded. So we'll send that guy out for it. Mainly because it's a it's a fantastic opinion modifier. You know, opinion is up now up to 77. This guy was at minus one not too long ago. So we're really starting to improve things with him there. So uh, I caught my son Oswald lying to me again, straight to my face without batting an eye. I almost had an innocent servant sent to the stocks. So we can have him get the trait deceitful, which is not necessarily good. So with the birch, he will speak the truth, which would give him a chance to lose deceitful, but it also give him a 10% chance to gain wrath, which is not too bad, actually, because it does give him some martial. We can talk to him about honesty, which gives him a chance to lose deceitful and a chance to gain honesty. And you can't have them both. It's one or the other. So, you know, if he does manage to gain honesty, he will lose the deceitful. So, what do we want? Do we want him to be wrath? Because it would certainly give him plus three martial. That could be cool. What's the negative? It hurts his diplomacy. Intrigue we're not too bothered about. Diplomacy slightly. Honest can be good because that gives him more diplomacy and more same trait opinion. I think we're going to see if we can get him wrath. Potentially. It's probably going to be the best thing for him. So he actually still has Deceitful. Which is not what we really want. But there you go. The Grand Hunt is over for now. This was a truly noble endeavour. And a true challenge of our martial abilities. We gain some prestige. And I think it's also still early enough in the year. Where we can hold a feast. So let's go and spend some more money and do that. And all of my vassals will be there. But we are over the 20 minute mark. So that is a good place to win. Thanks a lot for watching guys. I hope you're still enjoying Crusader Kings 2. And I will see you next time. Until then, goodbye for now.